we are going to begin to connect some dots here. This starts with the global pressure belts. Certain areas on the planet are under the influence of particular pressure systems throughout the year. If an area is dominated by low pressure, considering what you know about low pressure, converging, rising air, clouds forming, all of that, what would you expect? So in other words, if there was a place on the planet that throughout almost every day of the year, low pressure is the dominant pressure system, what would you expect in that area? Would you expect that area to be wet or dry? Wet. Because of that, would you expect that area to be heavily vegetated or not very vegetated? Heavily vegetated. Good. If an area is dominated by high pressure throughout the year, considering everything you know about high pressure, descending, diverging air, clear blue skies, would you expect that area to be wet or dry? You in the back, dry. Very good. And would you expect that area to be heavily vegetated or sparsely vegetated? You over there to the left, sparsely vegetated. Very good. Okay. And that's exactly the way it plays out. This is really a connection to climate. These are the global pressure belts. Take a good look first at this diagram. Notice what's happening. Right in the middle, in green, it says zero degrees, low equator. And then north and south of that, you can see 30 degrees, and we have high in purple. Then north and south of that, 60 degrees, and then in green again, low. And then north and south of that, once again, we have high with the North Pole and the South Pole. Then if you look all the way over on the left-hand side, I mean, excuse me, the right-hand side, made a little mistake in the recording. Don't tell anyone. From the top to the bottom, we have polar highs, subpolar lows, subtropical highs, equatorial lows, subtropical highs, subpolar lows, and polar highs. Okay? I'm going to go through them. Let's start right in the middle with the equatorial low. The equatorial low is centered on the equator, but it stretches from about five degrees north to five degrees south. And this is an area of low atmospheric pressure. If it's stretching from five north to five south, five plus five is 10. This means that it stretches over about 10 degrees of latitude. Remember there's 69 miles per degree of latitude, so it's about 700 miles, more or less, okay? I know when I fly across the equator, and I'm a lucky person, I've done this multiple times, usually you fly across the equator at night when you're flying in the southern hemisphere from the northern hemisphere or vice versa. When you do that, as you're flying along, I always notice that, okay, I must be in this zone for the next 700 miles because the plane bounces around a lot. There's a lot of turbulence. You have air that's rising up off the surface of the planet. It hits the bottom of those big flat wings and the plane bounces around a lot. Everything you expect with low pressure is happening at the equatorial low, which is converging, rising air, clouds forming, precipitation falling. All right, now take a look at the diagram. You can see where it's at. I circled the equatorial low in red. I underlined equatorial low in red also. This is where the equatorial low is at, stretching from about five degrees north to five degrees south. How does that set up climatologically? Take a look at this map. Now we're beginning to put some things together here. It happens that the major tropical rainforests on the planet are centered right along the equatorial low because this is a hot, wet area. Remember, this is in the tropical zone. And also remember, hot air holds more water. Therefore, when it begins to rain there, and it's always raining, it's low pressure, lots of rain comes down. You can see circled in red, the largest tropical rainforest on Earth, which is the Amazon. You can see circled in bronze, the second largest tropical rainforest centered on the Congo in Africa. And then the third largest tropical rainforest circled in purple is where Southeast Asia, Northern Australia, and Indonesia all come together. This would obviously be a much bigger tropical rainforest, but mostly there's water out there. Next are the subtropical highs. These are centered on 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. 
But again, they stretch over about 10 degrees of latitude. That would be from 25 degrees north to 35 degrees north. You know, that's 10 degrees of latitude. And from 25 degrees south to 35 degrees south. These are areas of high atmospheric pressure. Everything you'd expect with high pressure is happening there, which is descending, diverging air, clear skies, dry air. Let's see how it plays out. So I just circled the subtropical highs. You can see in the northern hemisphere in red, this is circled around 30 degrees north. In the southern hemisphere in red, around 30 degrees south, I underlined subtropical highs for you. Here's climatologically the way it works out on the planet. Notice that the great deserts are located here because of clear skies and dry air. If you look in red, this is a desert southwest of the United States, like the Mojave in northern Mexico, where Chihuahua State is at. Then if you go across over to where Africa and the Middle East are at, I think we know what the Middle East looks like. Even if you've never been there, we've been fighting wars there, it seems like, for the last 30 or 40 years, whatever it is. So we know it's not a tropical rainforest. Sahara, by the way, in Arabic means desert. So Sahara Desert is the desert desert. And it also sits along this belt. Now, in the rest of Asia, something else goes on. Once we get to the east of Pakistan, something else happens. And we'll talk about that a few videos out from now. Then in the southern hemisphere, notice Australia. Australia basically is a big desert with the exception of the coastal areas. Then the southern part of Africa, where the Kalahari and Namib deserts are at. And then the southern part of South America, not where the Andes are at, but just to the east of that where Patagonia is. Patagonia is a beautiful word, but Patagonia is a cold desert. It looks something like the Mojave in a lot of ways, uh, but it's cold. Then we have the subpolar lows. These are centered on 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south, but they stretch again over 10 degrees of latitude. So they go from 55 degrees north to 65 degrees north and 55 degrees south to 65 degrees south. These are areas of low atmospheric pressure. Everything you'd expect with low pressure is happening there. Converging, rising air, clouds, and precipitation. I circled them for you. You can see 60 degrees north is circled, subpolar lows. 60 degrees south is circled, subpolar lows. Now here's the difference. You have converging rising air, which is going to make clouds and precipitation. But first, these areas are very far north and very far south, which means it's much colder. Cold air holds less water. Remember that? It's like taking a 16-ounce glass and then changing that to a 12-ounce glass. So there's going to be less precipitation than you would get along the equator. And because it's so far north or south and it's so cold, additionally, what else is going to happen is that the type of precipitation is going to change. You're much more likely to get snow, for example, in this kind of an area. What do we get there? The great coniferous forests are located in this area. Coniferous means cone bearing. It's like, you know, pine trees, like Christmas trees. It's cold and it's wet. You can see that there are coniferous forests that stretch from Alaska across parts of Canada all the way to the eastern seaboard, all the way from Scandinavia to the eastern seaboard of Russia, including northern Mongolia. And then in the southern hemisphere, well, here's the thing about the southern hemisphere. There's not a lot of land down there. But the South Island of New Zealand, and then south of Australia, Tasmania, both of those have forests. And then the very southern part of South America, where Tierra del Fuego is at, that also has forest. The last are the polar highs. These are centered on 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south. But these only stretch over five degrees because, of course, there is no 95. So they go from 85 to 90 in the northern hemisphere and 85 to 90 in the southern hemisphere. These are areas of high atmospheric pressure. Everything you'd expect with high pressure is happening there, descending, diverging air, clear blue skies, dry air. Okay. Here I've circled them for you. You can see polar high, polar high, and then all the way up in the north and all the way down the south. Now notice this, these are the polar zones. It's cold and dry, the northern polar zone, the southern polar zone. You might say, well, what about all that ice? Well, what happens is, for example, a place like Antarctica gets maybe oh, five inches of precipitation annually. It's not a lot, but it's so cold there. You know, a warm day in Antarctica is 12 degrees. That's still far below freezing. It's 20 degrees below freezing. And a cold day is minus 120. So the little bit of snow that falls generally stays around. And if you pile this up over millions of years, you get 10,000 feet of glaciers. Okay. 
So you may very well have noticed that the pressure systems you saw on those global pressure belts were elongated. They were long stretched out areas. When I showed you the pressure systems before, I showed you cells, which means they're circular. That's generally the way we refer to high and low pressure systems, anticyclonic and cyclonic systems, as cells because they circulate. But when you have a long stretched out area of low pressure, we refer to that as a trough. And when we have a long stretched out area of high pressure, we refer to that as a ridge. The terms kind of make sense. A trough is where a pig puts its head down in to eat, whereas a ridge is the top of the mountain range. So you have the low part and the high part. Again, this is the circulation around a low pressure system. Notice this is circular, it's cellular. This is a circulation around a high pressure system. Notice it's also circular, it's cellular. Both of these, of course, in the northern hemisphere. But if you look here, you can see that we have three troughs circled long stretched out areas of low pressure. Those are the equatorial low and the two subpolar lows. So those are technically troughs of atmospheric pressure. And you can see here, I circled the two ridges of atmospheric pressure that are consistent. There's lots of ridges and lots of troughs that happen on the planet, but these are consistent. They sit at 30 degrees north and south. Those are the subtropical highs. 